church. It is so good to be together on this Ascension Sunday. This is the Sunday in which we remember the moment when Jesus, who had been with his disciples after the Easter experience, leaves them for the final time on earth. And it's a pretty significant day because John Wesley, who is the founder of our Methodist faith, really only considered three holidays or important church days that were not on Sunday. One of them is Christmas, the other one is Good Friday, and this one, Ascension Sunday, the day that Jesus left us to do the work. So you know why that's important? Because Jesus left us to do the work. <laughs> so welcome to church today. Let us find our center in our God who loves us beyond our imagination. Faith? That's a good lead in to us. <laughs> the work. The work. Oh my gosh, the work, you guys. You've been doing the work. And there is work to be done. Absolutely. No question about it. So, uh... What a week, huh? Um, first of all, uh, let's turn off our cell phones. We have, you know, those old pagers and things. You would, knowing, knowing all of our gray hairs out here, someone might still have one of those in their pocket from a suit they were wearing 25 years ago. <clears throat> I didn't know it was there. Wouldn't that be funny if that went off? And then the red books in your pews. Sign in with the red books in your pews. So, uh, uh, as you all know, they get emails of all kinds, and if you didn't, didn't know, we launched our precious Mildred this week. And um, I, I found out one little thing that said, those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day. Unseen, unheard, but always near, so loved, so missed, so very dear. And um, about a week before uh, Dolores passed away, not long ago, there was a group of us ladies that went over to visit Dolores, and Mildred went along. First of all, I took them to the wrong house to start with, and we all piled out of the car a block away and went to that corner house. <laughs> and um, I helped Mildred up the sidewalk, and you know, we had to watch, make sure we weren't falling off the side. And then we went in, and we had a great visit with Dolores. Uh, sat in there for quite a while. And then when we were leaving, a couple of them went out ahead of me and there was Mildred, Dolores, and I left in the room. And Mildred walked up to Dolores and took her hand. And um, Dolores said, I'll see you on the other side. And Mildred said, it could be sooner than you think. There you go. So um, keep everybody in your prayers. And she had... Um, all, she affected every single one of us, and also she, uh, there are people whose hearts are just heavy, heavy, heavy laden um, in friendship with her as well. All of us had a stage of friendship with her too, so keep her family and all, all of us in mind. And talk about a mission person, oh my gosh, what a mission person she was as well as Dolores. And so we, we love them dearly, and we will go forward and um, honor them, everything that we do. Last week, People's Pantry wow. honored them with um, serving 139 families, totaling um, 421 uh, people got food from us. Then those diapers, you guys, 4,775 diapers went home for this month. Um, to serve babies, it's about a month's supply. You remember paying for them even in our day if we weren't washing them. And um, with the diapers, there are 48 kids served in 40 households. So we're going to keep that up. And that's a wonderful, wonderful mission. Then the next day, Barbara and her crew cooked, and every last crumb was gone by the time they left and served over 60 people, some taking away their food some coming in and eating. And so, um, praise God for the mission work. So now, um, you are about to, and some of you know, and some of you don't know, that we're about to step into a big mission project, hosting this summer, right here in this building. So if you have a key and you walk in and you notice 
a lot going on, you can come in and join or turn around and go out the door, whichever <laughs> suits you. So we, we are going to host uh, the Sierra Service Project for two months. And um, raise your hand. First of all, everyone raise your hand. Even if, you have, you know, even if you've only been here a few weeks and you're a woman, um, you have contributed to SSP because we just gave them some money. But now, raise your hand if you have um, ever been a camper with SSP in your life. SSP, Sierra Service Project, now known as SSP for my um, voice. Okay, look at that. And if you have ever been a counselor for SSP, that means you took a group of young people twice and stayed with them for a week and did projects. And then if you've ever been employed by them as a counselor or a leader, and Kelly has done that for three summers. And um, what a great organization. It's an offshoot of the Appalachian Service Project that's been in existence for years. And Sierra Service Project of Sacramento has been going on for a long time. They, like many of our projects in Rancho Cordova, are receiving some funding from our Measure H funds. And they will be sleeping here and they'll do some projects for us, but um, these are some opportunities for everybody. That, and all our pantry and our BR guests is gonna be working around them, but most everything in the summer is just kinda quiet, but it is not going to be quiet around here. It's kinda nice to have somebody here all the time, too. And so, um, to let you know, um, you, if you know of anybody in your family or friends who might want to do a day of service or more, uh, Rancho Cordova residents get to do it for free. Um, but let me know and I'll give you the information. And the, the biggest thing of all and the opportunity for your neighbors, if you know someone that needs a project done at their house or their mobile home, they, will, they can do ramps, stairs and porches, they can do a drought tolerant front yard. They can do fence repair and chain link replacement. And they can do exterior painting. Not only can they do it, they want to do it. So if you know someone who has a need in your neighborhood, let me know and I have some flyers for that today. So mission people, you, you are. And they are, they do have in their budget to pay for our use of our facilities for those two months. So starting June the 10th, the staff comes. And then they start in the next week. And the last day that they'll be here is August the 9th. So when you're planning things, just keep that in mind. They're not going to be in Snyder, although the staff will probably sleep in the nursery unless we need it for something else at that time. But everything else will happen in at, everywhere in Adams Hall. So look forward to that. Tomorrow, well, after church today, there's an anniversary committee meeting. And tomorrow at 9.30, we are inviting all crafters and sewers to come for continental breakfast as we kick off the holiday fair for 2023. I know it's hard to believe how many months that is away, and it isn't that many. Four o'clock, Zoom Bible study, and we just have uh, two sessions left probably, and then we'll be taking a summer break, so join us for that if you'd like. 4.30 on Friday is a Zoom SBRC, Staff Parish Relations Committee, and um, you should have received an invitation if you're in that committee. We hop into Memorial Day weekend next week. Are we having an admin council? I see you back there, Debbie, this Sunday coming up. Okay. Okay, great. So watch for um, whether that's here or on Zoom this week if you're on the admin well, council. Be here okay, I'll be here. Good. Um, in, t in two weeks, we're going to celebrate Mildred's life at church, and we're also having pies for guys and a luncheon that day. So look forward to that. Should we not have a potluck next week, Kay, and put it to the next week? Would that work? Okay, we'll get that. Well, you okay? Well, if someone can help us with that, we'll put the potluck off to the next week because we're gonna have a really delicious one. Everybody's and the next gonna week is bring the first Sunday the, of the, June, so you can put 
that in your mind. Yeah. Luck on, the on the first Sunday of June. Communion, the whole deal. What a great morning that's going to be. Uh -huh. Yes, breakfast and, yeah, mm -hmm, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So our affirmations we're holding on to for one more week, and they're, they're just so true. I'll sti I am still in the presence of my God, relaxing and fixing my thoughts on Jesus. I meditate on the truth that Jesus is constantly with me. And Jesus, keep me aware of your loving presence. Draw me back to you when my thoughts start to wander. Let your joy flow through me to others. Whoa, birthday week, here we go. Today, and I don't see her out here, is Carol Sankey's birthday. She's walking somewhere, you know. She's on a walk somewhere. Tomorrow is um, the next, as Mark Lucas's birthday. On Tuesday, Betty Karmatova's birthday. They're, those guys are always celebrating. That's Nargis's sister. On Thursday, the Vester family there would be celebrating Thad Chang's birthday. Friday is Lynn Geiger's birthday. If you get a chance to give an a email to her. She is in the directory, too. And Saturday, Ann Simmons celebrates her birthday. And no relation, E.J. Simmons celebrates his birthday. And two, oh boy, these years just keep adding up. Two anniversaries this week. Tom and Julie are celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. We're going to hear about some special things they do as they celebrate in the coming weeks. And then John and Nancy Vester have their 48th wedding anniversary on Thursday. That is pretty stunning. So a lot happening. <laughs> yes. Another um, th uh, group working around the SSP group is going to be the men preparing in 44 days, Tom tells me, for the July 4th fireworks celebration by selling fireworks the week before. And as you know, um, we can all help by signing up for shifts, and there's a sign up in Adams Hall. It's important uh, for everybody to give a hand if you can. And that's the men's mission work. Once they get those funds they make from the fireworks, they come right back to us in many, many ways. Building ways, site ways, and again, in um, helping folks in the community. So support that group by signing up for a special um, shift at the fireworks booth. No prediction yet of the weather, you know, what it's like out there. So let's see here. Maya Angelo. And when great souls die, after a period, peace blooms slowly, and always irregularly. Spaces fill with a kind of soothing electric vibration. Our senses restored, never to be the same, whisper to us. They existed. We can be, be, and be better, for they existed. Have a wonderful worship. Thank you, Faye. And I forgot to ask Faye to talk about, we are still looking for technologically confident people that might be interested in subbing here and there as sound or AV. Um, mostly it's just pushing a button or a remote, so it's not too complicated and someone will always be here to help you. Just, I'd like to make sure that Julie and Tom get the time off and other things that they get to do for their lives. Please join me with a living God. You may rise or stay seated as the Spirit moves you.
worship. Today is Ascension Sunday when we celebrate Christ's return to God. We look up in wonder as he is lifted from earth into heaven. But this is not a time to gaze upward. No, there is work to be done. Jesus has entrusted the ministry of God's love to us. Let's get to work. Let us prepare our hearts for the tasks ahead with prayer and with praise. Let us lift our hearts and voices in song. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. So you're going to come down, we're going to sing. of all the cool, I think it's Pixar films. So how many of you remember that Up is about an older guy, an old man who's in this really old-fashioned house that is everything around him is being built up into skyscrapers and businesses and all of this stuff. And he, he has some kind of bad thing happen to him. His wife passes away and then he gets really mad at someone and a judge tells him he can no longer live in his house. And so he has to go to a nursing home. And he decides that that is not the life for him. And so he gets hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of helium balloons and he attaches them to his house. <laughs> this is, you know, a cartoon, it's okay. So, <laughs> and before they come to get him to go to the nursing home where he does not want to go. His house takes flight and goes up in the air. And he has a quest and a mission in mind. And his quest and his mission are to go to find a magical place that he's only read about in books that is somewhere in South America. Now, there are many, many things that happen along this trip, including the fact that a Boy Scout who was trying to help him out ends up with him in his house that is going up. <laughs> and he, this Boy Scout is to no end annoying to this man. He does not like this Boy Scout. Uh, but he decides he better make the best of it. So the Scout gets to come along. And anyway, along the way, they encounter a set of talking dogs and a bunch of other very interesting, actually my favorite character is the bird, if you remember this bird that they're after. I can't remember what it's named. I think it's named Kevin, Kevin the bird. Um, and they have this incredible experience. And the whole thing is about raising up out of the reality of their lives, right? It's almost like exactly the opposite of the story that we're talking about today, right? <laughs> Jesus is giving us this grand instruction that we are to stay here on earth, down on the ground, while he goes up to experience God's presence and to watch over us and coach us from behind and be present with us. And we're left here on earth with all the stuff that, that our guy who wanted his house to go up has to deal with. So anyway, our job though as Christians is to remember that we can look up and experience that God is with us no matter what, kind of like that house floating up. It's something to keep your eye on. And that when we're down here, we can be guided by a vision of something greater and 
more beautiful and more amazing than we could have ever imagined. And our job while we're here is to help that happen, right? To make the world just a little bit better and help it happen with the guidance of Jesus who has to go up. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for the ascension that reminds us to keep our eyes on you while we keep our feet on the ground. Help us to do the work you want us to do and to be a part of your love every single day. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me with Let There Be Peace on Earth. Actually, we have the stewardship reflection. I am so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> and I'm going to invite Felicia up. <laughs> well, we don't even say it every time. <laughs> to share with us our stewardship reflection. Thanks for being here. Good morning, church. Good morning. So I was asked to answer two questions for you. The first one is why I share my resources with the church. And the second is how God calls me to serve the church. So I'm going to start with the second one. Because um, over time, I've learned when I'm thinking about my role in the church, as well as kind of my role in, in life, is, to, is through my time, my talent, and my treasury. And how I do that and how I kind of live that has varied over time. But I wanted to kind of talk about each one of those. Um, so the first one is time. That's the one I'm working on the most right now. That's my growth area. It's where and how I spend my time and how I'm a good steward of my time. The other one is my talents. And I kind of think back on 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm not going to read that to you. But it talks about the different talents and gifts that are given to the church. And I know that for me, teaching and administration, I kind of bounce between depending on where I am in life. And that's where I, I love to share my, my gifts and my talents with the church. The third one is treasury, and I think when I think about treasury, I think about the story. Um, it's shown in Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. It's the widow's gift, where the widow was giving two mites or two coins into the church, and Jesus noticed this, and he kind of called that out and said, you know, she's, she's giving more than these others who are making a big show of how much they're putting in the, the gift bucket. Um, but she's giving really... It's all relative, you know, we're give, she's giving out of her heart an amount that is significant for her. So it's not about how much, it's where it is in relation to everything else that we're doing. And that, that kind of story has really struck, stuck with me. Um, so that kind of brings me to the first one of why I share my resources with the church. And I think back to Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. It's in the Old Testament, but it really resonates with me. It's the only place where I've seen, it may not be the only place, but it's the only place I've seen where God says to test him. And, you know, usually we think, oh, don't do that. But in this case, he says, if you give, and in this case, he's talking about if you give of your tithe, test me and see if I won't pour out blessings, you know, really above and beyond what you can imagine. And that message has resonated with me. Um, Back in, on Sunday, September 18th, 2005, I gave the first tithe out of my paycheck. Now, I can't say that I did that every single paycheck since then, but it was a milestone in life for me. And I'd say um, just that act of faith in my relationship with God, I, I, I can't go back. And I've grown in every step of the way since then um, and really prioritized how I give back uh, into God's house. It's not just, you know, I think of it as, um, you know, this local congregation, this local church is God's house, his local presence for us. And it's very important to me to support the missions that we do. And I really think that when we commit in our hearts how much we are doing it, time, talent, treasury, all of that. He's going to bless it for us. God's going to bless it for us. And we've seen that happen. Um, we have so many people who give so much. But imagine, you know, just as that multiplies and grows and how we, how we do that as an act of our relationship for God really is um, 
something that I look forward to the year ahead. You know, we are stepping out in faith. Um, the church finances are, are a challenge right now, but I'm fully confident that, you know, when God sees how we respond in our hearts, God's going to bless it for us. So that's why I share my resources, and this is how God has um, called me to serve you guys. Thank you so much for your time. I want to say that Felicia was very modest in terms of her time and the talents she shares. She's our current staff parish chair. She has served on the staff parish committee for a number of years, but she's also our messy church coordinator, and that is no small task. It takes everyone in this room to make all of those things happen together, but the truth is Felicia has really stepped up as a leader to do these things, so she would never say those words, but I wanted to say them about her. <laughs> All right, now please join me with Let There Be Peace on Earth. So they're very happy about that. Thanks be to God. On our prayer side, uh, please pray for Bob and Georgia Hot as Bob enters hospice care at their home at Escaton. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. A prayer for health and happiness for our member Shirley Campion. Shirley is staying close to home, but she would love a card or a note from her church friends. Calls and visits may be possible in the future. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. Jeannie Hadri passed last Friday. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. And of course, we mentioned earlier that Mildred Ennis has passed away. Prayers for her son and daughter and friends during this time. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. And please keep David and Kimberly Cole in your prayers. Kimberly has had a serious heart attack and is still hospitalized. <coughs> oh Lord, hear our prayers. Oh Lord, Easter had such an impact on our lives. We walked the byways with Jesus, ate with him, and wept at the crucifixion. Easter morn dawned brightly in our lives at the news of the resurrection, and we sang songs of great joy. As we gaze, everybody gaze. Oh, oh, sorry. As we gaze, gaze into the clouds today, remind, remind us, us that we are standing on holy ground. Place, place our feet on the pathways of peace and hope. Draw our attention from the vision of the Lord rising to the sacred ground and help us to focus on the ministries that are ours to do. Keep us ready and willing always to serve you all our ways. Amen. Hear us as we pray in Jesus' powerful and loving name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And 
I, I want to add to our prayers as well that this uh, last Thursday, Sherry had her third retinal detachment in her left eye. And so she is again uh, having had emergency surgery on Friday, face down for five days. And really, it's, you know, those of you who have been through a retinal detachment, you know how hard this is. And she had just had surgery on the 8th. So Lord, hear yeah. our prayers. Whew. Yes. So let us call ourselves to the offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you, Lord of life. Amen. Thank you for these gifts. Thank you for the gift of the many people in this church who pour out their energy and effort and resource to make your kingdom come here and now. So may we be faithful as we use these gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. from the beginning until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father this, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, and as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Words of God, words of life. Thanks be to God. You know, before I begin today, I want you to look at the beautiful white altar space. 
noticing the light that has been with us since Easter. And I want you to take a moment and I want you to thank Carol and his Barbara here, yep, and Barbara, who have made our altar space so beautiful for this season and who do it week after week after week, the flowers and the cloth and everything that just makes it so resplendent. So thank you. And that's my precursor to say, next week it all changes. It is Pentecost next week. And what color is Pentecost, my friends? Red. And what are you supposed to wear to church, my friends? Red. And what are you going to wear to church? Red. And if you hate red and you don't own red and you don't want to wear red, I want to see yellow or orange. You have a commitment. What are we going to wear next week? Red. red. Very good. <laughs> And the church promises to dress accordingly, right, Carol and Barbara? <laughs> we will. We will all dress accordingly. It'll be beautiful. So please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, thank you for this text, a text that this week has particularly inspired me to think on what it means to share your word outside of my comfort zone. May we all think and pray and know that we are called into this as we uh, explore your scripture this morning and unfold it for ourselves and for those around us. I ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. I lift this prayer in Jesus' strong and loving name. Amen. Amen. I spend a fair amount of time telling you about how important it is that Jesus is fully human, right? You hear me talk about it a lot. Jesus is fully human, and that means that God cared enough from God's great realm above to put on skin and to walk among us and to feel pain and to love big and to do hard things and does it all in the form of a human, right? So we spend, I spend an inordinate amount of time on that because it speaks to me. It, it matters to me that that's the way Jesus came to be on this earth in the flesh. But today is a day in which we have to think of Jesus beyond that fully human person and really imagine and think and pray about Jesus, the fully divine did you notice the sound effects in the background for that, you guys? <laughs> I'm just as a truck pulling up, but that was pretty good. <laughs> Jesus, the fully divine, Jesus who is going to, who does in this story, ascend into heaven. Ascend, I mean, think about that. It's not helium balloons on a house like up. It is just like whoosh. And the disciples are left there. Standing, and I am sure their mouths were open, right? I mean, it doesn't actually say that in the scripture, but I have just no doubt that they were like, what? <laughs> you know? And I have spent entire sermons talking about that moment of wonder where they're just standing there staring in the air and they don't know what to do, right? But the thing is about this text and about this story is that Jesus gives them some operating instructions, amen? He says, you are going to be my witnesses, so I want you to say, I'm going to be Jesus' witness. I'm going to be Jesus' witness. And I'm going to do it in a lot of different places. And I'm going to do it in a lot of different places. And now I want to tell you what Jesus told his disciples, which is, you are going to be my witnesses. And I'm going to use my body as Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. And you are going to be my witnesses in Judea. And that's going to be where Andy is. And Nargis. Wave Judea. And you are going to be my witnesses in Samaria. Oh, God, you guys are so good. I did not talk to them about this. <laughs> and to the ends of the earth. Okay, so you can sit down now. Good, you did. There, <laughs> you were on, see, you were on top of it. And so these places are meaningful. Now, Jerusalem is where the disciples are are in that moment. And they are surrounded by people who are more or less like them, within their comfort zone, doing their faith things. They are mostly faithful Jews, and some of them believe in Jesus the Christ, and more and more of them get to believe in Jesus the Christ. And Jesus says, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. When's that going to happen? Next Sunday on? Pentecost. Where you're going to wear? Red. Good. Or orange or yellow. <laughs> Somebody had to make sure. <laughs> and, 
And when you have that Holy Spirit, you are going to take my word outside of your comfortable city, and you're going to go to a place where it kind of includes the city. It's right on the side of the city, and it's kind of big, but you might not know your neighbors quite so well over here in Judea, right? And so you're going to be challenged a little bit. You're going to be invited to talk about Jesus the Christ and the power of God and the ways that God transforms people's lives and experiences in a slightly less comfortable zone over here, right? And then you're going to come all the way over here to Deborah. And, you know, do you remember, um, do you remember who lived in Samaria? The Samaritans, the good, yeah, the story of the good Samaritan, right? And then there's the Samaritan woman who challenged, that was very good, you guys. You're like, why is she asking me that? <laughs> this must be a trick question, right? And the woman, you know, there's a Samaritan woman, there's, a, there's all kinds of people that Jesus utilized as persons that help us understand that the gospel message is not just meant for the people who are right here in Jerusalem. And Samaritans are among those people. It's a challenge that the Samaritan was good. It is important to recognize that Samaritans are culturally very, very different from Jews and, and Christians. And so not only are we gonna go here where our neighbors are kind of like us but a little different and we haven't met them yet, but we're gonna go over here where they don't even speak our language or do our things or, or practice our faith the way we practice our faith. And we're supposed to bring this message here too. Whoa, what does that mean for us here today? We are extremely effective at bringing our message inside of our comfort zone, right? I've been thinking so much because, you know, we're, we're struggling financially and our, our first go-to to think about how we're going to do better as a church is like, we're going to have a great evangelism and we're going to get all these new people in and then they're going to start giving the way we are who've been here forever. I know, <laughs> Carol Lee is sitting there she's going, no, 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 no. <laughs> It doesn't work that way. You might do the evangelism and you might get a whole bunch of cool new people in, but it's gonna take them a while before they get to the point where they wanna give in a sacrificial way, the way like Felicia and you know, like every single person in this room does, right? It takes a while, but it makes me think like how are we sharing the message? And I have said before, and I think we all know what this is about. I wish I could talk about Jesus the way I talk about Trader Joe's. <laughs> Right? I'm like, on the third aisle, you can get the best dried fruits and nuts and the most amazing frozen entrees that don't have too much sodium. And you should really try out their fizzy water. It's only 99 cents a bottle. It's terrific. The prices didn't even go up on eggs this year. And it, they didn't, by the way. So, but I wish, I wish it was just as easy for me, your pastor, to talk about Jesus on a daily basis the way I am so enthusiastic about inviting people to Trader Joe's. Right? You have a thing. How many of you go to Falling Prices religiously? Uh-huh. <laughs> you won't raise your hands, but I know you do. <laughs> or how many of us take a particular walk on the American River Trail or somewhere else, and you're like, you have to try this walk because, you know, there's all these cool mushrooms, and then there's water birds in the water, and then there's this great foliage, and in the fall, the trees change into these beautiful colors. Right? Or maybe it's a book you read, and it's not the Bible perhaps, but it's something that you just can't believe that everybody else hasn't read. And so you go, have you read this book? These characters are so well developed and written. How do we talk about the things that we are passionate about? How do we talk about them? And here, I'm asking us specifically to think about how do we talk about God? How do we talk about Jesus, the living Christ, with people we know? That's the biggest, that's the easiest. People see who you are and they're like, what, what works for you? Why are you so happy? Or your life seems particularly meaningful. Have you ever had anyone like kind of long to be a part of the meaningfulness of your life? Yeah, I mean, people do. They're like, it's really meaningful. What do you do? And you go, well, we volunteer at this food bank and we go to church on Sunday and we fellowship with these folks and we pray for each other and we go to the hospital when somebody's sick and we make 
food and hot dishes, covered dishes, if you're from the Midwest, and we take them when, when there's need. And, and, and church is pretty great. Wouldn't it be great if we were that fluent about church and about Jesus as we are about other things, right? So if we're invited to take this message here, we're doing pretty well right here, right, church? And we're invited to take the message to the people that live kind of on the corners and the streets and the other places, the farther reaches, right? We're getting pretty good at that. That's a little bit uncomfortable still. But I, I don't actually think we've reached you, Deborah, and I'm so sorry. <laughs> there, there's just a way that it is so much like thinking outside of our box to try to figure out how to share what is compelling about Jesus the Christ, the living Christ, about church, his body in the world. Literally, we are his body in the world. In, in all of these contexts. Right? Are you feeling challenged right now? You're like, oh God, what's she going to ask me to do at the end of this sermon? <laughs> right? What, are you, what am I asking you to do is what I'm asking myself to do, which is to learn to talk about this place and this story and about Jesus, the living Christ, who not only came and lived and walked among us as a living, breathing human being, but also ascends to be with God and is God, not just ascends to be with God like, hey, Dad, yo, but I am actually you. You are me. I don't see, now you're confused. And we are together, and we love in a way that encompasses every part of human life. How do we talk about that? And I am going to challenge us to think about how to talk about it, because we can have as many conversations as we want about putting leaflets in people's mailboxes, and as many conversations as we want about inviting all these people using the internet and all that. And yes, we're doing the right things there. We're getting there. But the truth is we have to be able to speak from a place of authentic joy about our church, about our relationships with God, about Jesus the Christ who walks among us, walked among us, who teaches us and taught us, and who gave us and gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we are empowered. We have to be open to the Holy Spirit, amen? We have to be willing to let the Holy Spirit work and move through us. And then we have to be willing to take the risk to move outside of Jerusalem, outside of Judea, and yes, finally, Deborah's going to find it, <laughs> to the places where we're the least comfortable so that this message and this experience and this joy can be a part of the world. Jesus calls us to this work. And John Wesley, he chose Ascension Sunday as one of his big three, right, with Good Friday and Friends Christmas, and ascension, because he said this is where we are left to be the body in the world, to do the work. So let's do it, friends. Let's do it. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing Over My Head. If it's something that you don't know, um, it's... You'll be repeating, or not repeating, echoing, it, I hear music in the air. So we'll start with the chorus, I hear music in the air. Then I'll say, um, oh, when the board is silent. And it is in white for, you. for me and yellow for you all. Sounds great. So please rise or stay seated as the spirit moves you and join me.
well for a song you don't know. Yeah. Let's uh, link up with each other because nobody's called to do any of this stuff alone, right? And when we look up and we see Jesus ascending, we know that God is with him and God is with him and God is a part of us and God gives us hope and strength and life. So go in peace knowing that God is with us. Go in peace knowing that Jesus came to do this work as a man and as God, that we might learn how to be better faithful people and that we might be saved and full of love and that we might share that love with others. Go in peace, understanding that next week and every week and right now, the Holy Spirit blows around us and all through us and gives us strength and courage and joy to face the future. Amen. Amen. Amen.